Hi everybody, how are you today? Sharon here, Sharon Hankins from the blog I Restore Stuff. Um, and we're about to do a DIY project right here on Essential Stencils page. Are we crafting? Anyone crafting out there at the same time as we're, we're doing our live today? So we're gonna be doing some fun fall decor. We call it autumn over here. We never use the, we don't usually use the word fall, but we're gonna do some of that and we're gonna do some Christmassy things. Okay, so we've got two main sets that I'll be working on with this sign here and you can see all the fall fun things here. There's the fall mini icons set. The other one is called fall vibe. Fall vibes is the other set that we'll be using. So the other one I wanna try and use in a minute is for a round sign, but I'm gonna use this great big vintage style winter stencil set. It's a two pack actually, winter wonderland. I just love the look of these old vintage signs. I love um, seeing some of you on here. You get lots of inspiration for making signs for your antique booth stalls. I've got an antique booth in our town and our city of Brisbane here in the suburb of Camp Hill. If there's... Um, originally I thought, you know, maybe I'll just use the leaf, but I want to sort of layer these icons all over my background. I've painted a board here in the color hazelwood. It's kind of a grayish, I don't know, gray, no, yeah, well, a gray brown color. I thought it lent well to the fall vibes. That's called Hazelwood by Fusion Mineral Paint. And we're gonna use some of these fun fusion colors, Bayberry, I've got some copper metallic that I'll use today, some mustard color, and a red Winchester. So the vibe set has this one that says, uh, grateful, thankful, blessed. So let's get started. I was thinking about just doing a border and then I thought, let's just do everything and put it all on the board. Now it could look a bit too much, but the way that I'm gonna do it, I'm hopefully thinking that it will work okay. I wanna sort of have the pumpkin centered as a feature here. And I want to sort of go a little bit like this, up and around, having different things all over the place. And we, we may even put two of these on here. So to do this, I wanted to use some of these fall colors um, and look, I'm just, I'm just winging it. <laughs> and you may or may not agree with it, like it, but please leave comments, let me know what you think because um, I sometimes go to my comments and go, hmm, should I do this, should I do that? So if we're gonna put the pumpkin as a bit of a feature, we wanna do that one last because as we're layering it, we'll go in underneath the pumpkin for that. But we're gonna do it sort of with such a dry brush that it will create a bit of a background effect. Let's see. And then if we do our pumpkin, and then we can do this. No. So I wanna do mustard on the pumpkin, so we'll leave that one for that. Probably a little bit of white there. Nut squash up here in the corner and create a bit of a mustard look on that. So because we've got such a large space here, I'll choose a large brush. So our brushes come in a set of four and the brushes, we dip our brush and there's a great big blob on the end there. I definitely don't want to use all of that. We're going to offload that into the jar. First of all, just want to offload, see we've just got a big chunk right there in the jar. Then I want to use my paper and just swish that around in the brush. But because we've got such a large section, in here to fill, you could literally um, offload some of that inside. But we are going to make a bit of a background here, so we don't wanna, I want it sort of um, a bit, oh, how, do, how do I say it, rustic. So we don't wanna just fill it all in totally solid, we're gonna make it a bit rustic. I feel like I've got a bit of a, too much of a blob in the center, but it's okay. Let's see, what else should we do? Over here, we want to try this, and I'll add that down here. So we want to try and move these around a bit. And I know some of these colors, I'm probably like, you know, we're not gonna see green acorns, but I'm just using the fall colors. <laughs> we're just doing this acorn, and it's got a large section in the middle as well. And again, this isn't going to turn out it's very subtle because these are all dark colors, but then we're gonna add our words on top and that's gonna add the brightness to it. So hopefully that'll be enough to stand out and create a bit of a background. So that is really subtle. I don't know if you can even see that from there. I'll hold that up so you can see. 
acorn right there. So if I wanted that to really stand out and pop, I could probably add, add some more, like a, um, a bit of a shadowy kind of thing to that. So maybe I'll do that. So with the leaf, let's try a little bit of green, just whatever's left on the brush, which isn't much, and it's probably not going to stand out. Then we'll add, <coughs> popping that in the plastic bag, a little bit of red, sort of this rusty red, and I will be adding a bit of copper. Maybe the copper will be a good highlight there for some of those that we've just done. Offloading the brush, and I'll put that right where the green was. You really can't see that green. I might just go over that. Coming in from the edges. And remember, I'm just sort of doing this rustically. I'm really making it up as I go along, guys. <laughs> oh, well. And this is a little bit, you know, that's all right. <clears throat> so you can see our colors, add some copper to the other pieces. But if we start this with copper, let's have a look. So this is Fusion Mineral Paints metallic range. And gorgeous copper effect. Um, I'm just holding it this time. Use painter's tape if you want to hold it down. And I'm just doing some spattery copper bits, mostly around the edges. And then now I'm going to brush a little bit of a swirly. We've got it strong around the edges on here. I'm actually not going to add any more copper to my brush as we get to the center. It's just going to look less and less and less. So it's tapering off. Oh, I like it. And you probably can't see it. Oh yeah, you can. You can see it shimmer. All right, so I'm placing this down exactly where I had the acorn. Now I'm not adding anything to the brush just yet. I'm just going to use what I had um, going on on the center of that pine cone right there. It's a little bit of a shimmer and hopefully it will help to just showcase where the edges are because that bayberry green that I used is really very close in tone or shade to the um, hazel wood the underneath. So we'll just have a little blend on the edges and let's see if that stands out a little bit more. Oh, it kind of looks 3D, look at that. So then we want to add our pumpkin on here and we want to add some of these little wheat kind of, yeah, I might add this to the background of here. So I'll put my pumpkin around that where we want it. <clears throat> and this wheat, what could we do? We could do that mustard as well. Let's go with that mustard. All right, just adding this here to make it a little bit of a rustic effect. You know what? I'm doing the pumpkin mustard so I should have probably done the wheat a different color <laughs> and then I was going to flip the wheat over so we've done that side we can flip it over and do the background coming up here into the copper we could even do that white you know it's a bit of a trick to try and get your colors all standing out so this green is kind of not really standing out too much but okay so I'm just going to put this wheat over here for a minute and add some white over the top of that oh hard to tell where it exactly was and so hopefully we'll see a little bit of that um, in the background. And I'm just kind of splattering it here with a bit of the white. And that'll sort of make it stand out. So look, yes, a little bit of a smattering. So see how I just pounced and then you can see the little, the edges there. I will start it with this solid mustardy color and then I'll go over it with the white. You could add that green to those leaves too. Now just be careful on these. The pumpkin has very thin, what we call bridges, bridge lines. Uh, if it did too much swirling, it would lift those up and you may get paint underneath them. So that's one thing to be careful for when you're stenciling. I've got the pumpkin stencil on there. I'm going to grab this green. I do like the idea of that ivory tone. I wish I had a sort of like, we've got over here, we call them Queensland blue pumpkins and they're, they're, the state of Queensland is the state that I'm from. 
and they've um, got that blue, nice blue skin. It's sort of kind of a bluish grey skin colour. Okay, let's have a look at that. And again, like I was thinking, we won't be able to see that green too well on the other little flecks of red on here. I don't know where that came from. Probably the edge of a jar. <clears throat> And we're flipping over the wheat, so we did it this way, now we're going to do it this way and I'm bringing it in front of the pumpkin and it's going to come up into the pine cone right here, right about there. Let's see what colour are we up to. I think I'll just do that in a bit of a subtle white. Oh, that's good. Christy said they all stand out from the sun, but turquoise would be pretty as well. Yes, for the pumpkin, absolutely. Now, to do this, you know how I flipped the wheat stencil upside down. You would want to make sure that it was really well cleaned off and totally dry. You can't have wet stencils or wet brushes when you're stenciling for best results because it will thin the paint out and it will sort of bleed all underneath your stencil. So, um, but because my paint on the other side, that from doing it this way, it had dried out completely. I'm pretty confident that I won't get any paint while it's upside down on here. So there we go. There's that little bit of um, wheat coming up here. Should, should I match it to the other side? What do you think? Does it stand out too much? And I should add a little fleck of mustard in there. Maybe so. So let's see another leaf colour. Maybe I'll do a leaf right here, and we'll do a bit of uh, we'll do a bit of green on this side to cover up copper to green. Let's do that. And again, I'm going sort of like I did with the pine cone around the edges here, but I'm going to blend this and do the green. Blending it in towards, now I do want to cover up that red because otherwise that would look a bit um, crazy. And then I'm blending it with the copper centre. So you could try all sorts of different colours. We're creating a fun, colourful fall background here. I still feel like that acorn needs a little something, a little something else. A little pounce just to kind of match it. Now, last time I put the mustard down first and put the white on top. Yep, that's a little better. All right, just a subtle red. And that just brings that tone in from, from this side over to this side. Even though I've got the wheat then coming up here. So I kind of feel like I need to make that wheat stand out. So see how there we've got a nice blend of that acorn. So you can just kind of fiddle with it, mess with it a bit more, make sure that you've got all the right colors. I want this white coming on top of the red that I've done there with the acorns. I'm just gonna finish that off. Just a little detail that I feel like I need to fix. It's gonna get it in the right place. All right, so the white over the top of the red there. There we go. That's just so that we can make sure that that's standing out. So there we go. Oh, how do you think that is looking? I feel like I want to add something else somewhere, I'm not sure what. Just adding a bit more, oh, wow, I didn't know that there was that much on my brush. <laughs> so we're just making it a little bit more standing out. And then because we're doing <coughs> the words in white, I think they'll really stand out. There we go, I feel like there's lots of shading going on there, but see that metallic just really makes and picks up the whole piece, doesn't it? Uh, we could even add that, a bit of that metallic, to this pumpkin down here because we don't have any metallic going on in the pumpkin. And we want that to sort of be our feature. Now because this green is not standing out very much, maybe I'll just add a bit, maybe a little on the bottom too. It won't be too heavy, it'll just be subtle. Yeah. Subtle pumpkin. Pumpkin bling. How's that looking? I love that shimmer. Can you see that? Okay, so let's add our words. But um, we'll just start with the words in the middle first. Oops. Sometimes if I feel like I've got a little bit too much on my brush, I'll, you'll just see, you'll see me pouncing and not so much swirling. Um, not much of a, 
uh, what do you call that? Dabbing or pouncing, but a bit more um, pounce and swirl, pounce and swoosh. So I pounce, hold it instead of up and down, pounce, hold. And then as I get less and less on the brush, I can do a bit more of a swirl kind of thing. So I'm just running out around about here. I'm going to peek. Not going to show you, just going to have a little peek. Oh, yep, looking great. <laughs> You'll have to wait. Oops. Okay, so offloading your brush as much as you can. Look at that. I thought I would have to tape off the reef, but I've actually done a just enough. Well, I've probably hit the reef in certain spots, but I will show you what it looks like without, and then I am going to add it because I've accidentally done a little switch over here. So here it is without the reef, although you'll see a little bit of my reef, um, you know, because I didn't tape it off. But we will add the wreath now and you'll see. Look, and now we'll add it on. Now the wreath mainly goes in this direction so we can sort of brush the brush in that direction as long as you have not much paint on your brush. If you have too much paint, remember, it'll go under the edges. And we don't want that. It's starting to run out, add a bit more. I do love that metallic, don't you? And um, bringing this in together. So I've got a affiliate link. There we go. So it kind of ties all the words together. I'm happy with that. Let's see. My next stencil that I had planned for today is quite a quick one. So um, even though we've only got a few minutes left, it is a quick and easy one to do. So let me grab that really quickly, quickly. <laughs> and I will be just using the white paint to do a quick stencil, but I just wanted to show you how you can use a round board. And I'm going to, this is, uh, oh, I didn't bring my measuring tape, guys, I didn't bring it. So it's a round board, but we've got a really long rectangle and you can just, you can absolutely do these on a rectangle sign. Now it's two-sided. We've got a two-pack ice skate rentals, this one. So we've got a round board, but you know what? I like that the words all fit on the board. So that's the most important factor for me. If I just find, like literally I found this at a thrift store. It's actually a double-sided, what they call a double-sided placemat, and it's a really nice so when you find stuff like that, I bring it home and then I see what stencils might fit. And this one obviously doesn't, but I'm going to make it fit because that's what I like to do. So I see that the words fit and that's the most important thing. And I like the way that they sort of taper. And then we've got the ice skate boots up here. I want to go up and down with the grain of the wood and I'm just placing that right here to the bottom. Let's do that just to make sure that we don't go anywhere. Oop, I think that's... Yep, around about the right, the right uh, length, width. Lost my tape. Running out of tape. Hanging in. This is picket fence. Really bright white, so it'll stand out nicely against that grey. And all we're going to do is go over and do all the words and the patterns. I like the patterns. Let's start with these words anyway. It should be super fast because I've got hardly any paint on my brush, and we want to make a nice rustic sign add it as you go add a little bit more paint but we've just got to be careful not to have too much on our brush and this will be a nice wintry christmas sign is anyone else sort of um, a sign maker you've got a antique booth somewhere and you're thinking about starting to create and make signs for fall and christmas for your shop i know that a lot of people who are makers who especially make for their shop or for markets, they actually need to start at this time of year. And some people might think, well, isn't that a bit too soon for Christmas? No, it's actually not when you're a maker because you think about it, you've got to be manufacturing the stuff. And then by the time you finish doing all of that and get all your goods together and ready, then it's time to put them in the stores for people to buy for Christmas Day for around you know, September, October or whatever. See where I live we have zero snow ever, it doesn't snow in winter, anywhere where I live. 
and in Australia you have to travel further south to see any snow because we are on the southern hemisphere and so the further south you go the colder it gets and so we are actually we are going not skating but skiing in September with my family can't wait for that um, up in the hills in the country of Victoria in the mountains there is snow in winter time they have ski fields up there so that's where we'll be Okay, let's see. I hope this is turning out bright and white. Um, we've got a grey background, but I did add a bit of a uh, sort of like a charcoal black glaze type finish over the top of the grey lace mat. And it, because it has a lovely wood grain, that black kind of the black glaze sits in the grain of the wood. Now, if this isn't uh, bright enough or the white doesn't feel like it's solid enough then you can always go back and do a second coat Let me have a little look oh I think that's looking fine oh yep looks like I had a little bit too much on my brush in some spots but I think we've got it all guys that turned out really well so see how we can make just a rectangle and so then I'll probably drill a couple of holes right here maybe add some ribbon a white ribbon or something like that to add and then we can hang it up. So how cool is that? If you missed how we did these, you can go back and watch the replay. And we've also created this copper metallic pine cone with snow on the top of it. So hope you enjoyed that today. I'll be back again for another DIY live next week. See you then. Bye.